Today's video is brought to you by AG1 by Athletic Greens and its wonderful blends of vitamins and minerals. AG1 by Athletic Greens is the all-in-one's green powder that is going to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet and support your body's nutritional needs across the four pillars of health. Energy, gut health, immune support, and recovery. It's packed with 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food sourced ingredients, combining the perfect amount of micronutrients, absorption, and, well, taste to jumpstart your daily routine. You'd be hard pressed to find a more comprehensive powder or supplement on the market. Now, look, I'm not exactly a fitness YouTuber. You are not coming here to learn how to. I'm trying to think of a fitness term. Squat. Squat. I don't know what that is. That's not what I do. But look, I know also don't have the healthiest diet in the world. I try, I try, but I know I'm not getting all my vitamins and minerals. And that's why I use athletic greens. What I do, you pop one scoop of that stuff in the jar in the morning, you shake it up and boom, you are good to go. It also tastes surprisingly good for how healthy it is, but also less than a gram of sugar. So that's nice. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, vegan, keto, low allergen, and low calories, less than a gram of sugar. But I just said that, I did that one from memory. One of the things I personally like about this is I generally have this a little bit earlier in the day. It's my second one today. I might, should I finish this? Can I have double athletic greens? I don't even know. Look, I have it with my coffee in the morning. It makes me feel healthier. I feel like it, you know, gets me set up right for the day. Get your own at athleticgreens.com slash megaprojects and what you will get, you'll get your athletic greens and you'll also get this vitamin D dropper. There's a year's supply of vitamin D in there and also five of these travel packs so you can do your AG1 when you're on the go. Again, athleticgreens.com slash megaprojects. Link below and now today's video. Contrary to the sci-fi-esque allure, unmanned drones are not an invention of the modern era. Not by a long shot, actually. In fact, their development launched a good century ago, with their first major milestone, the Queen Mee test flight in 1936, predating even color TV or indeed the answering machine. Yet despite their long running era. UCAVs never really piqued the interest of the US Navy initially, as the use of autonomous aircraft at sea introduces a plethora of problems one would not even think about at first. Merely protecting a drone from the salty and thus highly corrosive sea air was a hurdle that not a single penny or thought had yet been invested in, not to mention all the interfering signals aboard as aircraft carriers that would throw the navigation instruments into chaos. For the most part, it was impossible to apply already existing technology to the maritime domain without further development. So, tackling this endeavor meant starting all over again in many respects, which was fairly daunting. At the turn of the millennium, this initial reluctance was finally overcome when both Boeing and Northrop Grumman drafted the first theoretical blueprints under contract to the military. With a budget of $2 million each, the intent was not to develop a production-ready model, but rather to devise a proof of concept on paper which these companies delivered. Barely a decade later, the X-47B, better known as the Billion Dollar Drone, was fueled and ready for its maiden voyage. The average production cost of a modern combat drone is in the ballpark of 50 to 100 million dollars, with certain basic models being available for a measly 5 million. These benchmark figures set expectations extremely high when envisioning a billion dollar drone, and rightfully so. But don't let your fantasies run too wild. Neither is the X-47B made of solid gold, nor is it a miniature Death Star. The observed price point of one billion dollars does not refer to the production cost for a single unit, but rather the costs of the entire project cycle in the broadest sense. Years of development, prototyping, and field research are subsumed in that number. It should also be noted that this was rounded up generously as the actual budget was more in the neighborhood of $875 million. And look, although the moniker is slightly misleading and an excellent YouTube title, the venture was nonetheless wildly expensive and insanely ambitious. But why was the Navy suddenly so intent on acquiring a carrier-based drone? The general idea had been kicking around for a while, but it had been deemed unworkable up to this point. Just like with teleportation or invisibility, the strategic advantages are basically self-evident, though seriously exploring these topics felt a bit too absurd to justify any investment. Then again, 
Well, just consider the potential benefits. By using carrier-based drones, the Navy would gain a considerable amount of flexibility. Being able to deploy their unmanned assets almost anywhere in the world without being hindered by a lack of airstrips, the range of potential targets would increase dramatically. In addition, UCAVs can carry significantly heavier payloads than crewed aircraft due to the lack of a cockpit and pilot, meaning they could be equipped with superior sensors and weapons instead. Its range, stealth capabilities, and versatility would make it the perfect tool for conducting long-range surveillance and reconnaissance missions, as well as carrying out precision strikes with surgical accuracy. Furthermore, a compact drone would free up precious hangar space on carriers previously occupied by the much bulkier fighter jets. But the most obvious reward, of course, was not to endanger the pilot's life in air combat. The high price tag and the lengthy development process are both indicative of the many challenges that had to be overcome. Many critics had claimed that the whole endeavor was nothing but a pipe dream and that the investment would never pay off. Yet, in 2003, when Northrop Grumman successfully launched their prototype into the air, they provided clear proof that this was not just overpriced snake oil. This predecessor of the X-47B, logically named the X-47A, also bore the title of Pegasus. Its design was based on the tailless flying wind concept without a horizontal stabilizer, giving it the general shape of a flat arrowhead. Powered by a single Pratt & Whitney high-bypass turbofan engine, the aircraft boasted a thrust of 14.2 kilonewtons, pushing it very close to the sound barrier. Thanks to its unique aerodynamic design and its use of composite materials, the Pegasus had a very low radar signature and reduced wear and tear from the salty atmosphere. In the software department, developers have taken a fail-safe approach. The aircraft is controlled by an operator who can give it direct orders, but the onboard computer is also capable of carrying out its mission in complete autonomy in case the signal gets cut off for any reason. Even though the Pegasus test flight was deemed an overall success, it revealed some weaknesses which had to be rectified for the follow-up model. For example, it was discovered that the access hatches were prone to cracking from strong winds blowing across them. There were also difficulties with the weapon mount, so the flight test had to be completed entirely without a dummy load. Other features were missing altogether, including the tail hook, which is essential for landing under real-world conditions, and they had yet to come up with a tail hook design that wouldn't compromise the stealth functionality. In flight, refueling was not possible yet either, although this was already a standard feature of piloted jets. But keep in mind that the A model only served to illustrate the interim status anyway, so these shortcomings were not a setback. Work on the next iteration began without delay. Up to this point, the development was a smooth sailing from a funding angle. This changed in the spring of 2006, where the project was shelved temporarily following a review by the Department of Defense. Avoiding bureaucratic technicalities here, they reallocated the budget to their next-generation bomber program, which focused on manned long-range bombers instead. Luckily, however, their earlier investment was not in vain. After only a short hiatus, work could be resumed, even though the funds now came from a different part and the responsibilities shifted slightly. The development of the B model followed a completely different paradigm. Whereas before the idea was to demonstrate only a few basic potentials, the objective now was to get a production-ready design as close as possible. So for the X-47B, the Navy didn't cut any corners. On the contrary, they added new corners to their overhaul triangular design by introducing retractable tail wings, which improved horizontal maneuverability. This made the X-47B the first autonomous stealth aircraft whose wings could be folded, which became necessary as the new model was considerably larger. Growing by about 50% both in length and wingspan, it measured roughly 12 by 18 meters when completely extended. Nearly every aspect had been improved by orders of magnitude. With an engine nearly eight times as powerful, the new model came even closer to breaking the sound barrier. But as the additional thrust had to push a significantly increased weight, it would remain at subsonic speeds. Besides its own weight of 6,350 kilograms, a load of up to 2,000 kilograms can be attached to the two weapon bays. The new version is truly a jack of all trades when it comes to sensors and detection modules. As a rule of thumb, it's safe to say that if it exists, the X-47B has it. Here's a short rundown, even though we're merely scratching the surface. It's got electro-optical and infrared cameras in every direction, synthetic aperture radars that allow the drone to map out its surroundings in real time. It's got a ground-moving target detection and indication system which tracks even the fastest objects down to the millimeter. It's got a tracking module specialized for moving targets on open waters, an ESM scanner which picks up enemy radar signals. It's got LiDAR sensors which emit pulses of laser light to create a 3D map of the area around the drone, among many, many other features. And 
probably more which are classified and just not known about. But look, in other words, with all these sensors, playing hide and seek with this drone is not going to be a game you win. But the most impressive improvements have been made in the field of artificial intelligence. Whereas the original X-47A could only follow a set flight plan and carry out pre-programmed routines, the B model is able to make decisions on the fly and react to changes in the environment without human intervention. This was made possible by a new onboard computer many times as powerful and with much more sophisticated software. Of course, a human operator remains in the loop at all times and can take over control at any given moment. In fact, the X-47B can even be steered with a handheld device just like a remote-controlled toy aero. Plane. But in theory, the drone could also complete almost any task by itself. Basic test flights began in September 2011. With two units built, the original plan was to complete 50 simulated missions over the course of three years. But as the results were consistently excellent, the trial phase was ticked off after just 16 iterations. Instead, the Navy decided that their prestige project was ready for the next level, which was yet another world's first. In April 2015, the X-47B would become the first drone ever to refuel mid-flight, enabling it to stay in the air for 100 hours non-stop. This is also possible the other way around, by the way. The drone was theoretically capable of refueling other aircraft in flight entirely autonomously, but this has not been tested yet. In conclusion, the X-47B had indeed turned out to be the game-changer that the military had been promised. Not only did the project show that carrier-based drones are feasible, but also that untold possibilities lie dormant in this area. But even though the prototype had passed every single test and exceeded even the most optimistic expectations, the future of the X-47 series lay unclear for a while. Continuing the program would probably result in even more advanced naval UCABs. But was it worth the cost? Unsurprisingly, there were public controversies regarding the budget of this plan from the very beginning. U.S. military spending has traditionally been a hot potato. Without picking a side in this video, some of these objections have merit. A billion dollars for a military study is a lot of money. That's particularly true when you consider that the research didn't really even have a designated purpose. They just wanted to see if anything would come of it. So what do you do with two drones which took years of work and a fortune to build? Of course, nobody in their right mind would entertain the idea of simply shoving them in a random aviation museum. Right? Well, I hate to break it to you, but that was exactly the plan, though they changed their minds last minute only to settle for an even more depressing fate. In January 2017, both X-47Bs were transported to Northrop Grumman's manufacturing plant in Palmdale, where they were stored in a covered hangar for good. One of them was allowed to perform a short maintenance run in 2019. Apart from that, neither of the two birds have seen the light of day. So, what remains of their glory and splendor? Could the X-47 project serve a higher purpose? And to be honest, it's not really clear. Although there are indications of a planned X-47C version, these seem to have gone nowhere due to a lack of funding. In 2017, Northrop Grumman publicly stated that it could not continue the project under the tendered conditions. Since it is a commercial enterprise, this can probably be translated as, uh, the Navy didn't offer us enough money to justify renewing that contract. To this date, the United States does not have a significant fleet of maritime drones, apart from a few other experimental prototypes here and there. So, a billion dollars completely wasted? Well, not quite. According to several reports and video footage, the Chinese military completed a very similar project in recent years. The maritime drone apparently shares enormous similarities with the American original, which is a recurring motif for regulars of this channel. Thus, the efforts at least provided foreign powers with a bit of inspiration, we suppose. Thanks for watching.